I've always believed in numbers. And the equations and logics that lead to reason. But after a lifetime of such pursuits, I ask, what truly is logic? It's no good, and you need to dump it. Look, the most powerful supplement that you will ever have, all of you, no matter how much money you have to pay personal trainers, the most powerful tool you will have to succeed, the most powerful tool is your fucking mind. You know, science has come a long way, yes, but there are some things science can't explain. And this whole idea that you need to have, you know, carry a cooler around all day and have meals every three hours, you gotta have seven, eight, nine hours sleep, you gotta have this kind of rest before you go to the gym, you gotta have this meal three hours before you go to the gym, you gotta take this supplement 15 minutes before you go to the gym. At intervals during your workout, you gotta take this, you gotta do this. You need to be cautious of all that stuff. It's all bullshit. It was very important to me to, to, to build the rest of the body up to that level. And then eventually after 10 years of training, I got to that level where I really felt so now that there's the perfect situation, perfect body, the symmetry was right and all that stuff. I didn't want to just be a movie star, I wanted to be a great movie star that's the highest paid movie star and have the buff the title building. You never want to fail because you didn't work hard enough. Give me a guy who's got the mindset, oh, I didn't get any sleep last night, but it's time to work out, let's go to the gym, let's kick ass. You give me a guy like that who isn't thinking about those things, but gets to the gym and becomes one. You didn't get as much protein today, you didn't get as much sleep as maybe you should have, those type of things. What does it fucking matter? What does it matter? Don't fucking step down to meet somebody else's silly ass fucking standard that is not backed up by fucking any real world experience. You will always be learning and you will always be starting over. The greatest fucking champions that have ever been still. I always wanted to be very intense. I always wanted to be number one. You're thinking too much about the small, you're giving too much attention to the small things that don't really matter, and you're not giving enough attention to the big, um, broader, more basic things that do. Ask yourselves, who do you want to be? I've always figured out that there's 24 hours a day, you sleep six hours. I have 18 hours left. Now, I know there's some of you out there now and says, well, wait a minute, I sleep eight hours or nine hours. Well, then just sleep faster, I would recommend. You never want to fail because you didn't work hard enough. can't climb the ladder of success with your hands in a pocket. I was poor because I didn't have anything. I had no money, I had no things, we had no TV, we had no refrigerator, we had nothing as kids. But I was rich because I had a dream. Dream of becoming uh, the greatest bodybuilder and I had a dream to use bodybuilding as a means to get into films. Dig deep down and ask yourselves, who do you want to be? Not what, but who? And I'm talking about not what your parents and teachers want you to be, but you. I'm talking about figuring out for yourselves what makes you happy, no matter how crazy it may sound to the people. Of course, trust yourself no matter how, what anyone else thinks. I didn't want to just be a bodybuilding champion. I wanted to be the best bodybuilder of all times.
He said, I want to be the biggest bodybuilder in the world, the greatest bodybuilder in the world, the richest bodybuilder in the world. He said, I want to be a film star and I want to go into politics. But I had no idea that it would go as far as it did, that it would go beyond the body roles, beyond the muscles, and then do movies like Terminator, Predator, End of Days and stuff like that. That was like, you know, I had to kind of reinvent my dream after I achieved that. Bodybuilding has been a beautiful experience for me and I will continue it for the rest of my life. I only stopped competing, but I'm not stopping bodybuilding. It's the greatest sport. Thank you. There's absolutely no way around hard, hard work. None of my rules, by the way, of success will work unless you do. He talked about him winning the Mr. Universe. He says to me, now he's the Mr. Olympia. And then when he competed in one Mr. Olympia, his goal was to win it many times, which he won it seven times. I love feeling like an outsider. I never want to be one of a million. If I wanted to be one of a million, I would have never got the body that I got. If I wanted to be one of a million, I would have never wanted to become the biggest star in the world. I never wanted to lose a competition or lose an election because I didn't work hard enough. I always believed leaving no stone unturned. Muhammad Ali, one of my great heroes, had a great line in the 70s when he was asked, how many sit-ups do you do? He said, I don't count my sit-ups. I only start counting when it starts hurting. When I feel pain, that's when I start counting because that's when it really counts. That's what makes you a champion. That's the way it is with everything. No pain, no gain. I mean, how many times have you heard that you can't do this, you can't do that, and it's never been done before? I love it when someone says that never, no one has ever done this before because then when I do it, that means that I'm the first one that has done it. So pay no attention to the people that say it can't be done. There must have been a time in your life before that when you, you didn't have any thoughts of bodybuilding at all. What sort of child were you? Well, I grew up in Austria. After, I was born after the Second World War in 1947. It was poverty. There was no food around, no, really nothing. And I think that was the reason why I developed such a uh, tremendous desire, a desire to get out of there uh, and a desire to make it in life, uh, to achieve big things. Trust yourself, break some rules, don't be afraid to fail, ignore the naysayers, work like hell and give something back. Don't be afraid to fail. Anything I've ever attempted, I was always willing to fail. You can't be paralyzed by fear of failure or you will never push yourself. You keep pushing because you believe in yourself and in your vision. And you know that it's the right thing to do and success will come, so don't be afraid to fail. Each year you live, it's one year less. When you're out there partying, horsing around, 
someone out there at the same time is working hard. Someone is getting smarter and someone is winning. Just remember that. Why do you want to work out? What is your goal? The most important thing is that you have a vision, that you have a goal. Because without that vision and without that goal, again, you're drifting around and you're never going to end up anywhere. People don't become successful just by accident. You know, I mean, maybe the guy uh, that found gold in California and started the gold rush, but don't count on that. That's the one in a, in a lifetime kind of a situation. So you got to really have a specific goal. And to me, to have that vision that I want to be Mr. Universe, that I want to be the greatest bodybuilder of all time. That was a great vision and that specifically to look like Reg Park and to be up there on that stage and to lift the trophy overhead and to win the championship over and over and over again. So that was a great goal. You have to have a goal. Now it doesn't have to be that specific goal, but it has to have some goal. This is why I always recommend to people, sit down, take your time and start thinking about why do you want to work out? What is your goal? And then it can't be as crazy as it is. It, it could be, uh, you know, I want to impress girls. If that's your goal, so be it, but it motivates you. It could be that you're emulating a certain, uh, you know, bodybuilder or a certain football player, a certain boxer, whatever it is, have those pictures put all over the wall like I did when I was a kid. I put pictures of Rich Park and of Sonny Liston, of boxers and of Ali and of powerlifters and weightlifters all over my bedroom, uh, you know, uh, wall. So that every day when I go to sleep, every day when I wake up, I look at those pictures and they motivate me. You need that motivation and then therefore you have this kind of imprint in front of you all the time and you know exactly what you're chasing. People always came up to me and says, why are you smiling? You're working out five hours a day. You're doing the same as the other guys, but the other guys have a sour face. They're pissed off that they have to do another rep or another set or something. I looked forward to, I looked forward to another thousand set, uh, reps of, of sit-ups. I looked forward to another 500 pounds of, of, of uh, leg press or squat. I looked forward to doing more and more curls until my arms fall off. Why? Because I knew that every rep that I did and every set that I did and more weights that I lifted, I get one step closer to turning that vision into reality. So I was turned on by that. I was excited. I couldn't wait to get to the gym. I remember that when I weighed 245 pounds and Bob Rafelson, the director of Stay Hungry, said to me that I'm interested in having you come in for a reading and work on your acting and all this because I'm interested in having you in a movie to star with Jeff Bridges and with Sally Fields. I was delighted about that and I was excited and I started pumping up more and more. And then he said, but I don't want you to weigh more than 210 pounds. You want me to be in a movie, but I'm weighing 245, 246. I say, I just won the Olympia. I say in 19, which was 1974, and I was really at my biggest. And, uh, but he demanded that, and he says, look, it's very simple. On the day we start shooting, he says, I'm gonna put you on a scale, and if you don't make the 210, you're out, because I have someone else in mind. And I worked on it, I started visualizing myself very clearly as a lean athlete. Because that's the only way I could lose that weight and all of a sudden get interested in running more. Because up until that point, I ran like three miles after training or before training or whatever. But now all of a sudden it was five miles, six miles, seven miles, eight miles. And they even ran mini marathons in order to lose the weight. And I did everything with high reps. And I was watching my diet, what I eat and all those kind of things. And but the day, the day before, I remember we were in Birmingham, Alabama. The day before I was at the YMCA with Bob Rafelson. He was swimming and I was working out and I was running. There was a track there and I was running. He says, let's step on the scale. And I stepped on the scale and I weighed 209. So it just shows to you what is possible if you visualize exactly what you want to look like.
and there was no room for any kind of like, well, I can't get my act together or anything like this, because there's only a certain amount of time. But the key thing again is have the clear vision. Have the specific goal of what you want to accomplish, because then you never go to the gym and you say, the day I feel down a little bit, I don't know what it is all about, I don't know my life, I'm confused. No. I tell you that I was a perfect example of someone that was not confident at all. I mean, when I was a kid, I was just like any other kid. I had my hang-ups and problems and all this. But when I joined the weightlifting club and I won my first little trophy because I did the best clean jerk, and then we went to another meet and they won another little trophy. I started feeling like somebody. But the bottom line is, everyone can use the same method because I used it in politics, I used it in making money, I used it in everything that I've done in the movie business. When you have one little victory, little victories add up and that is what gives you then ultimately confidence. Well, for me, the most important thing always is to have a deadline. Uh, so uh, when I, for instance, uh, had a competition, and let's say the competition was in the middle of September, and it was now beginning of summer, so there was no more time to screw around. So there was the time now to get uh, going on a diet, to get going with the training, to not slack off at all, because there was a deadline there. The day of the competition, I had to be in the best shape possible. And I knew that uh, if I come to the competition and I lose because I did not schedule my training the proper way, or I didn't have the right frame of mind, or I didn't give everything, literally worked my butt off, I would be just so angry. So I never wanted to be in that situation. So this is why it was very important to pick that time and to say, this is when I have to be in top shape, and then I work towards that. But it's not just with the competition. I mean, they're always the same in the movie business. I mean, to me, it was always a big advantage when I said, okay, my movie starts on April 1, and I have now three months, so I have to get really in great shape. So you pick those times. It could also be that you have no movie, and you have no Mr. Olympia, or no Mr. America, no Mr. Universe coming up, or any of those things, but you say to yourself, the summer starts in June. I'm going to go to the beach in June, and at that time, I want to be in great shape. So that creates an urgency that makes you really start training hard and taking it seriously. Because if you don't have a specific plan, then you wander around. I mean, you can have, as I've told you many times, the best ship or the best plane in the world. But if you don't have a specific goal where you want to go and when you want to get there, you just drift around and you never get anywhere. So this is why it is so important to create that urgency and have a specific time when you want to be in shape. Well, I mean, look, everyone has a problem with time. But the day is 24 hours, and we sleep six. Now, I know there are some out there that say, whoa, 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 I need eight. Well, I say, just sleep a little faster. Because the bottom line is we have six hours of sleep, 24 hours are available, so you have 18 hours now available to your work, your family, your hobbies, and also to learn something new or to do something new, which could easily be that you want to learn a new language or that you want to read as a, you know, a New Year's resolution, I have to read a book every week, or, or you say, I'm going to go and reshape my body. So you're going to go and take this hour out of your schedule and say, I'm going to train an hour every day. So this is for most people a, hu a huge challenge, but it is totally doable, I can tell them, because the kind of things that I did when I came to this country, I mean, I went to school, I was working in construction, I was working out my five hours a day. I was taking acting classes from eight o'clock at night to 12 midnight. I was doing all of those things. I wanted to make sure that out of the 24 hours of the day, that I don't waste one single hour. Those hours were too precious. And so there I just want to tell people, don't give me this thing, I have a difficult time with the time and I don't have time for this and I don't have that. You have time, you make the time. Because there's always people out there that will tell you that you will not be able to do that, forget it. It's a stupid dream that you have, or a, a crazy vision and those. Don't listen to the naysayers. 
So it's, I think the key thing is that we know where we're going and that you're very passionate about that. I mean, you see it always in front of you, the goal. If you think that you're gonna go and accomplish something really special and be the best in anything in the world, and you think you can do it without working, you make a big mistake. Because no matter what I did, if it was in bodybuilding or in acting or if it was in, in, in the political arena, uh, it always took a lot, a lot of work. And you got to put out and you got to, you know, some that make a lot of sacrifices and all this. If you're not willing to work hard, forget about it. So this is another rule that is uh, very important. We don't achieve big things by accident. So shoot for the top. The number one thing is you have to have a very clear vision, a very clear goal of where you want to go. Because only then you will get there. Uh, you can have the best airplane or the best ship in the world, but if the captain doesn't know where to go, he will just drift around. Don't be afraid to fail. I mean, how far can you fall? Here's the ground. That's as far as you can fall. You get, you know, winners always get up, dust themselves off, and move on. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you and make allowance for their doubting too, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting, for being lied about, don't deal in lies, for being hated, don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. If you can dream, and not make dreams your master. If you can think, and not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph and disaster, and treat those two imposters just the same. If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, who watch the things you gave your life to, broken, and stoop and build them up with worn-out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings, and risk it on one turn at pitch and toss, and lose, and start again at your beginnings, and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone, and so hold on when there is nothing in you, except the will that says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings, nor lose the common touch. If neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much. If you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and which is more, You'll be a man, my son.